Hello and welcome to the lesson. This is lesson one for conversation one and we are looking at relative clauses. And in this first conversation, two people talk about an old neighborhood. And as you listen, can you answer these three questions? Question one, what does the woman want to see? Question two, what is no longer there? And question three, what is still there? Now let's go ahead and listen and answer the questions. I'm so excited to see where you grew up. Well, a lot has changed since I lived here. Still, it must feel like home to you. Not so much. For example, the house where I grew up is no longer there. Oh, that's too bad. What happened to it? Well, the land it was sitting on was sold to build a new stadium. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, the whole neighborhood has been completely gentrified. Oh, really? How do you feel about that? It's all for the best, I suppose. The whole area was run down anyway. Is anything from your childhood still there? Yeah, a few things. The school I attended and the park where I used to hang out are still there. That's about it. Well, I'd love to see them. I'd love to know more about your past. Sure, we can swing by, but they're not much to write home about. Welcome back. So, could you hear the answers to the questions? Let's go over these. Question one, what does the woman want to see? The answer is his old house or where he grew up. And question two, what is no longer there? And the answer is his house. His house is no longer there. And question number three, what is still there? And he said the school that he attended and the park where he used to hang out. So those use relative clauses. So let's go ahead and look at these sentences using relative clauses. And we're going to do the grammar puzzle and English VIP. So first we want to listen for the missing words and also we want to review the vocabulary, intonation, and pronunciation. That's the VIP, the English VIP. So let's begin. Here's our first line. What are the missing words? I'm so excited to see where you grew up. She said, I'm so excited to see where you grew up. And this is actually a noun clause. And we're going to get to noun clauses when we get to uh, lesson number three, I believe. But when we listen, we want to listen for the chunks. So notice she says, I'm so excited to see where you grew up. Now listen yourself and you can pause if you like and repeat and work on your pronunciation. Let's listen and repeat. I'm so excited to see where you grew up. Okay, next. Well, a lot has changed since I lived here. Well, a lot has changed since I lived here. And one thing that's interesting about chunking is notice that, well, a lot has changed. It's almost the same length. Well, a lot has changed. Well, a lot has changed since I lived here. So in English, we have rhythm. Let's listen again. Well, a lot has changed since I lived here. Still, it must feel like home to you. Let's listen again. Still, it must feel like home to you. Still, it must feel like home to you. This is an idiomatic phrase to feel like home. When something feels like home, that means you are very familiar with it. You are very comfortable there. You are very relaxed. So maybe where you live feels like home. So when you go home, you're very relaxed and you are very comfortable. Let's listen again. Still, it must feel like home to you. Okay, next. Not so much. For example, the house where I grew up is no longer there. Not so much. For example, the house where I grew up is no longer there. So here we have our first relative clause. So the man grew up in the house. So the house where I grew up is no longer there. That is a relative clause. 
And notice the chunking, not so much. For example, the house where I grew up is no longer there. Not so much. For example, the house where I grew up is no longer there. Oh, that's too bad. What happened to it? Oh, that's too bad. What happened to it? So we have three chunks. Again, notice one word, just an introductory word. Oh, oh, so just this one word, oh, shows feeling, shows um, emotion, right? So by her saying, oh, she's letting him know that she feels sorry for that situation. And notice it's almost the same length. Oh, that's too bad. What happened to it? Oh, that's too bad. What happened to it? Well, the land it was sitting on was sold to build a new stadium. Ooh, here we have a relative clause. Can you hear the relative clause? I'll play it again. Well, the land it was sitting on was sold to build a new stadium. Well, the land it was sitting on. So the land that it was sitting on. Here we're not using that in this relative clause. Sometimes we remove that in a relative clause. So, well, the land it was sitting on was sold to build a new stadium. So notice the chunking. Well, the land it was sitting on was sold to build a new stadium. Now let's listen again and you try. Well, the land it was sitting on was sold to build a new stadium. All right, next. Oh, that's a shame. Ooh, did you hear that? What was that? Oh, that's a shame. Oh, that's a shame. So here, that's a shame just means that's too bad, right? That's too bad. That's unfortunate. That's a shame. All the same. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, the whole neighborhood has been completely gentrified. Ooh, one more time. That one's a bit tough. Yeah, the whole neighborhood has been completely gentrified. Yeah, the whole neighborhood has been completely gentrified. So when something is gentrified, that means that people that have money, richer people, move into a poor area and buy land or houses because it's cheap. They make the prices go up. They make the area more expensive. Then the poor people cannot live there anymore. They have to move away. That's called gentrification. And they say, yeah, the whole neighborhood has been completely gentrified. And gentrification is a problem now in a lot of places, right? Maybe in your country you have gentrification. So yeah, it's a controversial thing because sometimes people like gentrification because it adds value to an area. But then, of course, a lot of people don't like it because people that have low incomes often cannot stay there. All right, now let's listen and repeat. Yeah, the whole neighborhood has been completely gentrified. Oh, really? How do you feel about that? Oh, really? How do you feel about that? And here, notice we have how do you feel, and we stress how, and we stress feel, and we reduce do you. How do you? How do you feel about that? And so this is a common pattern in English. You stress some words and reduce others, and you can barely hear the reduced words. How do you feel? So we have, oh, really? How do you feel about that? Oh, really? How do you feel about that? It's all for the best, I suppose. The whole area was run down anyway. It's all for the best, I suppose. The whole area was run down anyway. So when something is run down, that means it's in poor condition, right? So your health can be run down, your car can be run down, your house can be run down, your neighborhood can be run down. So when you have something that's in good condition and the condition worsens, it has you know 
uh, poor quality or worse quality, then it is run down. And it could be a physical thing like a machine, or it could be a building, or it could even be your health, right? And notice she says, it's all for the best. That's a good phrase in English. It's all for the best. We use it's all for the best when we talk about a negative situation that has a good outcome. For example, let's say you lose your job and maybe people say, oh, I'm so sorry you lost your job. You could say, oh, it's all for the best. I wanted a new job. The job was stressful. I didn't want to work there anymore. So we, we could say it's all for the best. All right, your turn. Let's listen and repeat. It's all for the best, I suppose. The whole area was run down anyway. Is anything from your childhood still there? Is anything from your childhood still there? So here again, we have, notice the stressed words, is anything from your childhood still there? So we really stress anything in childhood. Is anything from your childhood still there? Is anything from your childhood still there? Yeah, a few things. The school I attended and the park where I used to hang out are still there. That's about it. Okay, this one's really interesting because we have two relative clauses here. And notice we don't have to say the relative clause. We could say the school and the park are still there. Perfect. But when you add a relative clause, it's like adding an adjective to a noun. It gives more information. So let's listen again. Can you catch the two relative clauses? Yeah, a few things. The school I attended and the park where I used to hang out are still there. That's about it. Yeah, a few things. The school I attended and the park where I used to hang out are still there. That's about it. And there's, uh, there's a couple of things that's worth talking about with the grammar. You could say the school that I attended, right? So I attended the school, the school that I attended. But when the subject is different than the word it refers to, in spoken English, sometimes we do not say what's called the relative pronoun, that or who. But if you have a sentence that uses a relative adverb, which would be where or when, you have to say it. You cannot omit it. So that's one little trick about the relative clause. So let's listen again. Oh, actually, no, before. Uh, notice the balance. So ready? Yeah, a few things. The school I attended and the park where I used to hang out are still there. That's about it. So notice the rhythm. Now you try. Yeah, a few things. The school I attended and the park where I used to hang out are still there. That's about it. All right, next. Well, I'd love to see them. I'd love to know more about your past. Well, I'd love to see them. I'd love to know more about your past. And when you talk about your past, you talk about maybe your childhood or where you worked before or where you went to school, your personal history, that would be the past. And here we have some strong reductions. I love to see them, love to. I love to know more about your past. So as you listen, notice to the reduction, notice the reduction of to. To often becomes ta. Well, I'd love to see them. I'd love to know more about your past. I'd love to see them. I'd love to know. Sure, we can swing by, but they're not much to write home about. Sure, we can swing by but they're not much to write home about. So here, swing by is a very useful verb or a phrasal verb. So when you swing by, that means you stop briefly in your journey and then continue your journey. So you're going someplace, but you go to another place first, stop briefly, and then you continue. So you can swing by and pick somebody up. You can swing by and buy something at the store. You can swing by and drop something off. So we say to swing by, right? So you're going somewhere, you're going this way, but you swing by. Um, and then also we have not much to write home about. 
So when something is not much to write home about, that just means it's not special. So this is an idiomatic phrase, not much to write home about. And I think it comes from like travel. You know, you would go someplace and you would write home about how great it is. But when it's not special, you don't write home about it. So we would say, oh, it's not special. It's not, <laughs> it's not much to write home about. Sometimes we say nothing. Um, it's nothing to write home about. Sometimes you hear, so you hear them both. All right, that's it. I think we're done. Let's listen one more time. Here we go. Sure, we can swing by, but there's not much to write home about. All right, now let's watch the video again. This time you can listen and read. And then when we come back at the end, I have one question for you, which I hope you can use a relative clause in your answer. Okay, ready? Here we go. I'm so excited to see where you grew up. Well, a lot has changed since I lived here. Still, it must feel like home to you. Not so much. For example, the house where I grew up is no longer there. Oh, that's too bad. What happened to it? Well, the land it was sitting on was sold to build a new stadium. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, the whole neighborhood has been completely gentrified. Oh, really? How do you feel about that? It's all for the best, I suppose. The whole area was run down anyway. Is anything from your childhood still there? Yeah, a few things. The school I attended and the park where I used to hang out are still there. That's about it. Well, I'd love to see them. I'd love to know more about your past. Sure, we can swing by, but there's not much to write home about. All right, that's the end. Thanks for listening, everybody. Now, before we go, I do have one more question for you. Let's see if you can answer this. Is the house where you grew up still there? And also, is the school that you attended still there? As for me, the house where I grew up is still there. My parents still live in that house. Uh, I go there and see them uh, every year. And the school that I attended is also still there, actually. And actually, I have family members that attend that school. Uh, and that's it. Thanks so much. This was Conversation 1 of Lesson 1 of Relative Clauses. Uh, if we have more lessons, we have lessons for Conversation 2, 3, 4, etc. coming up. So thanks so much for listening and see you in the next lesson.